Joyful blessings. This is Kaylin Costell with a look at Jupiter and Aquarius. And we're also going to peek at when Jupiter goes briefly into Pisces. And we're going to look at it from very many different perspectives, especially how it's such an, a mind expanding, mind blowing time that's happening. So here you can see a sky map from Sky and Telescope showing uh, the moon coming by Jupiter and Saturn on December um, 16th, 17th, and 18th, and it's on December 19th when Jupiter literally moves into Aquarius. Saturn goes in on the 16th, just a few days before, and I'm going to show you why this is one of the most remarkable things that we could imagine. I'm going to do a separate video on this rare visible conjunction, the closest conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter in 800 years. And I'll talk a lot about that. But first, this will give you the background about Jupiter and uh, why Jupiter in Aquarius is uh, so remarkable at this time, as well as um, there's already a Saturn video on Saturn and Aquarius that you can look at. So you can get the background on both of those. And then uh, in shortly will be a, another video looking at both Jupiter and Saturn together. However, we can't really look at Jupiter right now without also seeing Saturn. So you can see here's Jupiter and Saturn at zero Aquarius on December 19th. Uh, and notice where they are in the sky. This green line is the ecliptic. And this constellation is known as the goatfish. It's also called Capricornus, or sometimes it is referred to as Capricorn. And then below this is uh, the constellation of the archer sometimes also called Sagittarius. And so what's interesting is that Jupiter and Saturn are at zero Aquarius and they're nowhere near the constellation that's also called Aquarius. So we'll see uh, that in this next slide here. Here is the water bearer. And in shamanic astrology, we refer to it as the water bearer so we can reduce the confusion because it's also known as Aquarius. And when people hear that Jupiter and Saturn are in Aquarius, they just assume that it's in this constellation. But the constellations are different than the seasonal signs. The seasonal signs are determined by the solstices and equinoxes. And the like the December solstice coming up around the time when Jupiter and Saturn are um, actually making their closest conjunction exactly on the December solstice 2020, uh, that they're nowhere near the constellation that is called Aquarius. In fact, they're li literally a one whole constellation away underneath the constellation of the goatfish, also known as Capricornus. And here we can see the archer, also known as Sagittarius. And so this is just to give you a visual sense of how the uh, seasonal signs that have to do with where the sun is rising in a specific season has, isn't necessarily the same as what we think of as the constellations. The problem is that there was a time when they forgot about the difference and they named the constellations the same names as the seasonal signs. And that's what creates all the confusion now. And if you wanna know more about this, there is a video I did on the difference between signs and constellations. And I'll explain a little bit more about this in probably a future video as well. So uh, just to get a little sense of Jupiter and Aquarius, uh, Jupiter and Aquarius would say, when the mind is open, wisdom can enter because it's very much connected to the mental realms, the mind, how we think, how we perceive, how we um, are connecting into expansive uh, ways of tuning into reality. Jupiter and Pisces, and Jupiter is going into Pisces for a short time in 2021, um, would say when the mind and heart are open, wisdom is guaranteed. So when you take the mind with a loving heart and have an open mind and a loving heart, then the truest form of wisdom is possible. And so that's really the dance between uh, Jupiter and Aquarius and Jupiter and Pisces this year. And I'll give you more of the dates and uh, in information about that in a moment. So here's the uh, thing about Jupiter. It expands our concept of what is possible through the spiritual journey or quest for truth and expanded states of consciousness and it renews our vision of what is possible and it expands optimism and faith and these are important keys to accomplishing our desire based on what we place our attention and intention on so the idea is to choose optimism because it feels better than not and so jupiter is tends to be 
uh, an energy that can be more optimistic. Now, the thing is, is Jupiter expands. So if you're in a depressed place, if you're in a limited perspective, if you uh, are not in a, if you're feeling pessimistic, Jupiter can expand that. So ideally we're choosing to be more optimistic um, to have that expanded. Also our experience of, uh, Jupiter expands our experience of maximum fulfillment and happiness when we trust and have faith in our renewed vision and sense of possibilities. So, uh, so Jupiter, it's like over the rainbow, you know, having this expansive, optimistic experience. And yet, because Jupiter expands, you can have too much of something. You can be expanded into too much um, being overzealous, being overindulgent, overdoing. That might be the one I have the most trouble with. Um, being overextended, overwhelmed, overreaching, overreacting, overstimulated, over the edge, overly pessimistic, as we've already talked about, and overly dramatic. So the um, ideally, if you find yourself in a place where you're having too much pessimism or too much drama or too much stimulation or too much uh, doing, then, then the uh, opportunity is to bring that into a place of greater balance and to connect with optimism and the faith that we can bring this into balance and not necessarily overdo it. So the gifts of Aquarius and especially Jupiter and Aquarius is being able to tap into the big picture perspective, seeing where all the puzzle pieces fit before they're all in place. Also having freedom through expanded states of consciousness and freedom is probably one of the key words for Aquarius that it loves the most is to have that sense of freedom. Um, through higher consciousness, through visionary brilliance and innovation and revolutionary cutting ideas, being free to think outside the box. And, and this can then lead to um, unexpected sudden changes that further evolutionary growth through the experience of freedom. Yes, it's all about freedom. Now there is a shadow side to Aquarius uh, because Aquarius is the ar one archetype that might believe that all problems can be solved in the mental realm. And sometimes that uh, can actually limit our ability to uh, see other options and possibilities that uh, could solve problems, especially from when the heart energy is, is brought into that as well. So um, Aquarius can be checked out, it can be detached, it can be disconnected from the feelings in the body. So when it's disconnected from the feelings in the body, then the ability to connect into other ways of um, being innovative and creative and so on are limited uh, to the mind. And then the other thing about Aquarius shadow is I'm right, you're wrong. I'm, I know what I'm talking about. I'm the brilliant one. I'm the smart one. I'm the one that can see the big picture and you can't. And so being closed off to other perspectives and just being so committed to being right. There's also the cha challenge of being um, having extreme idealism and eccentricity. Uh, also the belief um, or the commitment or the um, perspective that technology is the answer to everything. Now, technology uh, it can has created a lot of amazing things and it depends on the kind of technology you're talking about. Are you talking about the technology of uh, how we interact with the world as human beings with the earth? Or are we talking about artificial intelligence or computers or all the different kinds of technology that we have. So technology isn't, it doesn't mean it's not the answer, but it doesn't mean it is the answer either. We need to have a balance of things brought in. Also another um, shadow of Aquarius, and I've witnessed this in many people, including myself, easily bored and onto the next project. Uh, so, um, sometimes not finishing things and just like, okay, I'm done with that. I'm ready to do the next thing. Then also the, 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 a shadow of Aquarius can be overly sensitive to the energy of others and the environment uh, because it's like, don't mess up my field. Don't mess up my space. I, you know, I'm, uh, I'm in this place that there's this idea of being light polarized and there's no shadow. So if there's no shadow and I'm not recognizing that, but you're bringing in a, a lower vibrational energy, I don't want anything to do with that. So, uh, so that can be one of the challenges of, of Aquarius. And when Jupiter's in Aquarius, it can expand the shadow side of it as well as the gifts. So just to keep that in mind. 
Now, um, I thought it might be fun to look at all the different times Jupiter has entered Aquarius since the early 1900s um, up through now. And so these are the dates and I will put in the show notes, uh, these are um, some um, handouts or uh, links to get the handouts so that you can uh, check into this if this is something you're interested in. The main thing I really wanted to show is that on December 19th, 1937, Jupiter entered Aquarius. And then it went into Pisces for a short time on May 14th, 1938, and then back into Aquarius on July 29th, 1938. And then on December 29th, it entered Pisces um, again. And we have a similar situation happening in 2020. And so every 83 years, Jupiter tends to repeat the pattern. So on December 19th, exactly 83 years later, Jupiter's entering Aquarius. And then on May 13th, almost exactly uh, 33 or 83 years later, Jupiter is entering Pisces on, on, in 2021. And then on uh, July 28th, almost exactly 83 years later, Jupiter is re-entering Aquarius. And then on December 28th, again, almost exactly 83 years later, Jupiter is entering Pisces. So this, um, I saw this pattern happen over and over again, but this is the one that is happening now. So that's the one I wanted to share with you. Also, uh, it's interesting to note that um, in 2021, Jupiter is gonna go retrograde at two degrees Pisces, and then it will go direct on October 17th at 22 degrees Aquarius. Uh, so the retrograde time starts out in Pisces, comes back to Aquarius, uh, and that is also what happened in 1938 when uh, Jupiter went retrograde and direct. Now, uh, during this time, on January 11th, February 14th, and March 4th, Mercury is making three exact conjunctions with Jupiter. And uh, so that's gonna be definitely worth paying attention to because Mercury is the messenger and Aquarius, uh, this is all happening in Aquarius, is the energy of um, uh, you know expansion of the mind. Mercury has to do with the mind, how we communicate and how we express. And so this is gonna magnify that energy and interestingly, it's on February 14th, Valentine's Day, when Jupiter and Mercury are conjunct retro, well, Mercury's retrograde, Jupiter won't be that retrograde, but Mercury is in the retrograde phase. And the sun will conjunct Jupiter on January 28th and Venus will conjunct Jupiter on February 11th. So those are some dates worth paying attention to uh, when, because that will just magnify the Jupiter effect that's going on and is all happening in Aquarius. So um, then some other things that I thought was interesting, well, I've, uh, we've already talked about um, the dates that Jupiter is entering into Aquarius and Pisces, uh, but you might find it fascinating um, to see some of the other things that are going on and the main events that are taking place. Jupiter, of course, the Jupiter conjunction to Saturn, and I'll have a whole video on that because it's just completely mind blowing. On December 21st to the December solstice of 2020, Jupiter will square Uranus on January 17. Um, and that's part of the feature of what Saturn's also doing this year. So there'll be a separate um, video uh, about this piece as well. And there's three times that Saturn and um, Uranus are coming into square to each other through 2021. So these are just some dates to be conscious of and to tune into as we have this opportunity to expand our minds in ways that we haven't had in a very long time. So I thought it would be fun to end with some quotes about how, um, sort of Aquarius mind expanding quotes. Uh, so Gary Spence said, I would rather have a mind opened by wonder than one closed by belief. And that can be the challenge if we get stuck in a belief and Jupiter comes along to expand that and, we're, and that belief just gets stronger and stronger and we just get more narrowed down into that belief rather than being able to see the um, expansive possibilities that can go beyond anything that we can even imagine right now. And then Oliver Wendell Holmes said, a mind that is stretched by new experience can never go back to its old dimensions. And that is the gift that Jupiter and Aquarius is about. It's helping to expand our mind so that it will go back into a narrow limited point of view, um, but that will be um, forever expanded from that place forward. 
So I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. You can see the show notes um, on YouTube for the additional links that will be there. Be sure you subscribe and activate the notification bell so you can get the notification when um, I get the uh, video posted on the rare Jupiter and Saturn alignment. And one of the things we'll be looking at in that video is how this is the first time in 615 years that Jupiter and Saturn have come together in Aquarius. And it's also the first time Jupiter and Saturn have been this close and invisible, visibly close to see it in the sky in 800 years. So if you'd like more information, you can go to kaylincastell.com or celestialtimings.com. Same, um, that this link takes you to the same website. And a lot of what I'm sharing with you is based in shamanic astrology. And there's um, a longer class on the Jupiter and Aquarius piece that you can uh, connect with from the uh, Jupiter, I mean, from the shamanic astrology website. So I hope that everyone has a mind expansive year in the year 2021 as Jupiter and Saturn both help to expand our sense of possibilities. <laughs>